All right, all right welcome everybody, Brad Show Live. It is, what is today? Wednesday, February 28th. I am losing my voice. So because I am losing my voice and because he is a, a handsome man, a very smart, intelligent man, I've invited David Moreno to come on and talk for me for a little bit. David Moreno is a fantastic criminal defense attorney, former outstanding basketball star at uh, Long Island University, former, more importantly, district attorney at, in Manhattan. He is one of the, he was awarded one of the top uh, 100 trial litigators in America, one of the top 40 black attorneys in America, one of the top 40 attorneys under 40 in America. The awards go on and on and on and on. We are happy, we are proud, we are actually honored that he is uh, he's part of the Spar and Bernstein team here. He's doing a fabulous job with uh, our criminal defense uh, department. And uh, we're welcoming, welcoming, welcoming him today Boy, I can't even talk today. Yeah, man, you're losing your voice I'm for real. I'm losing my voice. Welcoming, welcoming him today as our guest uh, host today uh, to join me here. So uh, what's happening, David? Well, thanks for having me, first off. Um, there's a lot happening in mm -hmm. our world. I'm really excited to be here and uh, to give my input, to join alongside Brad Bernstein. Uh, we're helping out a lot of folks in criminal defense here, uh, resolving a lot of cases. Um, thankfully for our clients, things are going you know, quite well right now. So for everybody out there, please do us a favor right now. We always do this at the beginning of our show. I think I have to move over. I'm a little out of the picture. Now, now, to me, Brad. now I'm better. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I, we remind everybody right now to do two things. Number one, please share this with your friends and family. If you don't share this feed with your friends and family, then we can't get the word out to everybody out there that we're here to help people. We're here to have some fun as well, entertain people, inform people, give people some good advice, and help everybody to achieve their American dream. And number two, for everybody out there, please, please like and follow the official Brad Show Live page. If you don't like and follow that page, you will not be notified when we come live. We're having a little late start today, a little technical difficulty with the TriCaster, but nothing that the cracked staff over in the, uh, in the control room couldn't handle. So with that, the telephone number to call is 1-800-529-5465, 1-800-529-5465. The, uh, the team at the call center, had, led by Fiona, has told me that the lines are open. We have two people on hold. Telephone number to call, 1-800-529-5465. By the way, Tamika Nelson says, hey, David. And Malia Loban Martin is not saying is not saying hello to David. <laughs> They're saying hello. She's saying hello to Sam, the okay. groundhog. Okay. Sam has taken over. Sam has taken over this uh, this show. So the telephone number to call one eight zero zero five two nine five four six five one eight hundred five two nine five four six five. In the news today, while we're waiting for people to call in, Mr. Moreno, uh, I had read a couple of things. Number one. Um, there was a guy by the name of Mohammed Monir Hassan. Their ICE is picking everybody up right now. They're picking people up. In, in, if, you, if you saw the show yesterday in Oakland, they picked up over 150 people in Northern California over this past weekend. Even here in New York City, which is a sanctuary city, ICE is picking people up. And now, based on what the Supreme Court decided yesterday, you do not have a right to get out of jail if ICE is holding you for more than six months. That was a right that you had up until yesterday. Wow. Yesterday, the Supreme Court said, under the Immigration and Nationality Act, you don't have a right, it's nothing written in that law that says that you have a right to get out of jail, out of civil detention, it's not criminal detention, mm -hmm. you're a criminal defense attorney, out of civil detention because Congress never said it anywhere in the law. And what they said was, we're gonna send it back down, this case down to the Ninth Circuit in California. And the Ninth Circuit, we want the Ninth Circuit to have a discussion about the constitutionality that Congress never put anything in in the law. So are they holding there's no due process for so, non-citizens? So they are saying there is no due process for non-US citizens until the Ninth Circuit decides whether the Constitution says there should be. And then once the Ninth Circuit decides that, it goes back to the Supreme Court, who will then decide whether the Ninth Circuit is right or not. What that means for people who get arrested by ICE, and there they are, the <laughs> group that is basically jailing people that I would think illegally, that entire group. Wow. But for three judges who voted Sotomayor, who Ginsburg, 
and um, Sonia Sotomayor is an alumnus of my old office. Yes, yes, yeah. right. Uh, my bureau as well. My trial bureau. Right. One, one, one recused herself who argued the case, which was mm -hmm. Kagan, and um, it wasn't Neil Gorish. What, there, there was uh, I forgot the name of the judge who who wrote the dissenting opinion. We talked about it yesterday. Just lost my mind in a second. Yeah, Breyer. That was it. Breyer. Um, he wrote the dissenting opinion, but basically five judges on that Supreme Court, all appointed either by Trump or by Bush, all came out and said, you don't have civil rights for the next year. And, and, and it's just mind boggling. So we were just, you know, I was just talking to Emily, who's one of our great, immig immigration, attorney. great immigration attorneys. And she says, I just was in jail three days ago and told this guy, we're going into federal court, you have a right to be released after six months if immigration is not going to um, deport you. And she said, and then the next day the Supreme Court came down with this decision, and now I have to go back and tell him, because of this, he's now going to sit in jail for over a year while we're fighting out his deportation So, so what does this mean for everyone, Brad? What this means is you have to be extraordinarily careful if you have order, if you are living here with an order of deportation, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't even begin to tell you how careful you have to be, and more importantly, that you should be getting legal advice Absolutely. immediately. There was, we just read in the newspaper today, talking about violation of your rights, uh, Mohammed Monir Hassan, this was just in the newspapers today, uh, he had an order of deportation, here's the guy, and he had an order of deportation based on the fact that he had a driving under the influence in 2006. Only conviction, right? Only conviction ever. He was ordered deported. He's going through cancer treatments right now. Wow. He was not expecting to be uh, picked up by ICE. Usually when you were having these check-ins, what Obama was doing was that if you had some sort of medical issues, mm -hmm. They were not holding you. They were not detaining you. They were allowing you to deal with your it medical issues. Ethical. Right. Makes sense. Especially if you were coming from countries, especially if you were coming from countries that may not have the same medical care that we have, that we're lucky to have here Absolutely. in the United States of America. So I assume that's what was happening because he's had this order of deportation for a long time and he's going through his cancer treatments and he checked in to ICE and ICE picked him up and detained him. At a normal schedule. At a meeting. normal schedule, but what was Obama was doing was saying, okay, you're going through cancer treatments, we're not going to arrest you, we're not, we're not gonna deprive you of your cancer treatments, we're not mm -hmm. gonna let you die in jail. But I said, screw it, because under Trump it's a completely different story. And um, they, picked, they picked the guy up, he's been in jail for a month, he's been deprived of cancer treatment for a month. Now, even if they start giving it to him now, they're killing the guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm no doctor, but I know that if you don't deal with cancer when you're supposed you to deal with stop. it, it, cancer doesn't stop no. because you're in ice detention. Cancer spreads. It spreads, exactly. You, they're literally killing the guy. So um, they're now making a petition to have him released, but he's been in jail for one month without cancer treatment. And that was in the newspaper today. Wow. Um, I read here, since his detention, Hassan has been bounced from a detention center in Tennessee to one in Texas, Hawaii, New Jersey, and then back to Texas while his family, <clears throat> excuse me, while his family fights in federal court for his release and pursues a petition for asylum. He was getting deported back to Bangladesh, mm -hmm. which presumably doesn't have the same cancer treatments that they would have. So here what in the legitimate States. reason does ICE have to move this man all across the country? They, they move him to wherever there's a bed. Correct. So ICE, you know, there's, there's 20 beds open in New Jersey. There's no beds open in California because they just arrested 150 people. They got to they gotta find a bed for this guy. They don't got to find a doctor for him, but they, have but to they gotta a find a bed for him. Because they, they, they're crowded in these jails. Correct. So they move people around. And now ICE, and ICE says, well, if the family didn't, make his petition in federal court, he would already be back in Bangladesh. He can get his cancer treatment in Bangladesh. Oh, yeah, what, what treatment will he get What there? treatment is he getting in Bangladesh and you're separating him from his family because of one DUI? And I'm sure this man has a family. Correct. Right? Children. Correct. So for everybody out there, you have to be so, 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 so careful. Um, you know, that's what's happening today with ICE. It's so important to have good attorneys, 
More importantly, and, and you can talk about this because this guy had a DUI. Okay. You know what the best way to avoid getting deported? Don't be found guilty of a in criminal offense yeah. in the first yeah. place. So I actually can put this into perspective. It's ironic with the change in the law this week. Just last week, uh, we had a, a client who had an old conviction from 1992. And it was a drug-related offense. And he hired us. He came in and we filed a 440 motion for this client. And the motion was granted, and he was due to go back in court to have his plea vacated, have his life potentially changed for the better. Right. Uh, he didn't have status. He would now be eligible to fi apply for status. I'm no Brad Bernstein, but I understand that much of immigration law. Right. And this man who was crying in my office two months ago when we found out the decision was so excited, had his wife call me because he was so scared to go to court in Brooklyn after the news came out that they were arresting folks in this sanctuary city and wanted to know what would happen to him if we went to court. And I told him, you know, let me reach out to the prosecutor and make sure there's no funny business going on in this case. And thankfully in our, in our situation, there was nothing strange going on. His vacation went through, his plea was vacated, and now he no longer has a criminal record in New York. So when you go to vacate a plea, Okay, I guess there's multiple things. This guy, I mean, this guy should not have pled guilty to this in the first place, which is what caused him to have his problem. But the best way, you know, people come back and try to vacate after mm -hmm. the fact, and, and, and it was a fantastic job. And, and, and you touch on a whole bunch of situations. One is just because you're in a sanctuary city, We'll talk about that in a section. Sanctuary city means that the local police are not going to touch you. Not the it federal. doesn't mean the federal police, ICE, are not going to touch you. Yeah. But, but more importantly, this guy wouldn't have had a problem to begin with. We went back and basically redid his case, reopened. Vacating a plea is reopening the case because there was some constitutional issue, some unfairness that happened in his particular case that is just so fundamentally unfair that the results are absurd, which in, in this particular case that this guy would get deported for, for what amounted to be a minor crime. So David Moreno, fantastic criminal defense attorney, was able to vacate his conviction. He's now no longer under any suspicion of deportation. But, but the real moral of the story is, is there's so many people who are pleading guilty to crimes just to get to finish the case yeah. without figuring out or thinking about what the consequences are, especially with immigration. Yeah, I mean, you look at this guy with the DUI. Yeah, with the, with the DUI, we don't know what the facts were in that <clears> situation, but a DUI, a murder, drug possession, there's a defense for every case. There, there are different levels to them. Uh, there are great defenses, there are strong defenses, there are weak defenses. But folks out there, especially non-citizens, should not be pleading guilty to a crime. Uh, unless they've thoroughly discussed it with an attorney first and they're fully aware of what the consequences will be in the future, specifically pertaining to the immigration status, especially in the climate we're in that right now with the, the presidents we, we have right now, um, the, the stakes are a lot higher for non-citizens. But, but by the way, I love this because we got right into the law. Usually, I'm just scoring around for the first uh, 15 minutes waiting for people. I'm sorry to, call. to make the show we more got, serious. We got we got right into the law here. And by the way, the telephone number to call is 1-800-529-5465. And yeah, if someone could get me some lemon and tea, that would be helpful. If not, I'll I'll live till 7:30. Um, you know what? Also, we saw in in the news today. Um, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I don't like to talk about politics. I always say the show's not about politics. Of and then Jill always goes, but you always talk about politics. Uh, Hope Hicks, who is like that model-esque uh, woman who is the spokeswoman for Donald Trump, she lasted four months, she's resigning. Mm -hmm. One day after she got grilled by, um, by uh, the Russian investigators at, in, in the congressional investigation. Uh, more importantly, we saw today we saw today uh, that a teacher in Georgia who was legally allowed to have a gun, his name was Randall, Jesse Randall Davidson, 53. He taught social studies in a classroom in, uh, I don't know where in Georgia this was, but somewhere in Dalton, in Dalton, Georgia, yeah. wherever, I don't know where Dalton, Georgia is. If someone can tell me where Dalton, Georgia is, if it's near Atlanta, if it's near the coast, I'm not exactly sure where Dalton, Georgia is, but he was legally allowed to have a gun. And he started shooting, and the teacher, right after Donald Trump, the NRA uh, said, the solution to school violence is armed teachers who will then shoot the bad people. Who's to say that the teachers are, are mentally 
Stable. Stable or know how to use a gun. And here we are three days later after this whole entire debate. After this entire debate. And this guy's shooting up a classroom. One person got hurt breaking his leg trying to run wow. from the teacher. Was this person a student? And it's nine, Dalton is 90 miles from Atlanta, Jill. Jill with all the information Jill, in my ear. Hitting us with the facts. Hitting us with the facts. You know, you, you, you look at things that happen, you know, in schools, and, and I've seen videos, viral videos of, of teachers, you know, choking students or uh, slamming students, losing their tempers. Teachers are human, just like everyone else, right? Uh, the, 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 there's no logical reason for a teacher to have a gun in a school. That's not the solution. Clearly in this situation, uh, this man was incited by the words of the NRA, incited by the words of, of our president. Um, I mean, I hate, to, I hate to go there, but there's, you know, if you look at the news with what's going on with a lot of teachers and you know, inappropriate relationships with students, if there are some teachers that can't be trusted not to break that barrier, why do you think we, we should trust teachers I, you know, I, to be armed at this, at this time? I, I don't think teachers should be, teachers are, are, are teaching. Correct. Okay, and, that's and law enforcement should be doing law enforcement, and guns should be out of the hands of people generally. That's my opinion. Um, and, and I think, I, I don't know where the studies are, but the facts are that, uh, that I've seen it time and time again. I don't have the statistics right in front of me, but the facts are the facts, which are places that have stricter gun control have less gun violence. Yeah. It is, it is a fact. I mean, this country is, is leading yeah. the way every year. All right, so um, what else is happening in the world before we get to... Our telephone calls, by the way, please call. We're going to be taking your immigration calls at 1-800-529-5465 in about three minutes. So please call. I know Lamar has been on hold for a little bit, as well as Sophia, Looking forward George, to hearing and from Nakia. Them. We're going to look forward to hearing from all of them. Uh, in 2020 Tokyo Olympics mascots are, have been unveiled. It is Did very we get the exciting. groundhog in there or what? It is very, I don't know. Uh, it's very exciting. I don't think the groundhog made it. But the Olympic mascot is a character that embodies both Old tradition and new. Uh, and uh, do we have pictures of the new mascots? Do we have pictures of the mascots? That is not <laughs> the picture. Rob. That is Sam the Groundhog. Look at Rob, Sam. I got robbed. Right, you got robbed. Is that Sam the Groundhog? Is, is Sam on the beach right now? <laughs> <laughs> that is not that. Sam, you were not in the running. You did not get robbed. I'm way cuter. You did not, those are, those are the mascots. I think Sam is much cuter. Let's put stuff, mascots, Sam, mascots, Sam. Let's go back and forth and let, let the Brad squad decide. Thank let, you. Let the, let the Brad squad decide who we like better. Uh, Sam, Tokyo mascots. Sam, let's see Sam again. Tokyo mascots. We're gonna let everybody vote. We'll let you know at the end, Sam. All right, let's, I got two dogs, T-Bone and Lucky. Okay, Barbara Streisand apparently had a dog by the name of Samantha, who was 14 years old. Uh, she died, but then she cloned the dog, and the dog is back to life. Wow. And now Samantha cells were taken from her mouth and stomach before she died. They replicated the DNA of Samantha, and now she's back again. She's back again as Miss Fanny. Isn't that something? That's crazy. So I'm assuming uh, Miss Streisand has some cells of herself somewhere. I have no idea. I would idea. imagine so. It's going to be a second Barbara. It's going to be a second lucky Samantha. Lucky T-Bone, my dogs, that will not be happening. That is it. That is it.